Hello, welcome to live interactive English. My name is Kim, and I'm Mike. And we're going to be talking about something very interesting today. Yes. What is it? Fashion. Aha.、Uh-huh. More specifically, fabric patterns. That's right. The design and look of the things that you wear. A lot of that. Comes down to fabric patterns, right? Indeed, it does, and we're going to be talking about some really common ones and、yep. the history of them, including animal prints such as tiger stripe, ooh, leopard print, ooh, zebra, ooh, very fashionable, and not only but just traditional stripes as well, featuring vertical stripes, horizontal stripes, and the ever popular pinstripe. Ooh, I like pinstripe. That's a good look. All right. Well, so let's check out our article. We'll be learning about these and so much more in the、uh, look at fabric patterns. Common and history. History. It's gonna be great. Some fashion styles change from year to year. Others stay popular for centuries. What is the history behind some of the most common fabric patterns we see every day? All right. So our article today is. I kind of like these articles. There's articles about things that you never thought about before in your life,、no. but they're actually kind of interesting. Yes, this is you, one. When you do actually think about them, right?、Yes. We're going to be talking about fabric patterns. Uh huh.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some common ones that you are probably wearing right now, like we have here. Okay, stripes. Yes. And what kind of fabric is that? I have no idea. It is a、uh, silk. I want to say. Okay. All right. And I'm probably wearing cotton. And I have little check. This might be gingham. I'm not sure. Is this gingham? I think so. I want to say gingham because I like saying it. But we don't really know, and that's why we're learning about fabric patterns. Yep. All right. So let's learn about them. The article begins. Some fashion styles change from year to year. Others stay popular for centuries. Absolutely. This is very true. You know, there are certain things that you see someone wearing it, and you're like, oh my gosh. I haven't seen anyone wearing that since 1997. And then there's other things, and you see pictures from a hundred years ago, and you're like, "Wow, they were wearing blue jeans that look just like the blue jeans we're wearing today." Yeah, some fashions are really timeless.、Mm-hmm. You can see people from years and years ago、yeah. wearing them, and they look fine today too. And、mm-hmm. others, like maybe bell bottoms,、eh, Ooh, well, not those, so good. Those might be coming back, but yeah, fashion changes. But in some ways, it doesn't change. Right. right, and we're here to find out what is the history behind some of the most common fabric patterns we see every day. That's a really, really good question. So we'll take a break, and we'll come back to answer some of that and focus on some of these ever popular fabric patterns. <laughs> What kind of fabric is that? 那是什么料子 Fabric 这边指的是布料。这个单字我们在接下来的文章里面会常常听到。Kim 回答 ，It is silk. Silk, S I L K. 中文叫做丝绸。我们来看看另外一个 fabric， 它是 cotton。棉布，棉织品。These shirts are a hundred percent pure cotton. 意思就是这些上衣是百分之百纯棉的。你在逛夜市的时候有没有听到那个叫卖的人会讲说，哦，这是百分之百纯棉的哦，买到赚到哦。接着我们听到 Mike 指着他的衣服说 ，Gingham, G I N G H A M。这个字非常的实用哦，因为常常在街上会看到很多人穿这个图案。它的图案呢，就是有很多很多小的棋盘格，英文就叫做 gingham。那最后呢 ，Kim 有讲到这个字 timeless， 不朽的、永恒的、永不过时的。来看个例句哦 ，Good design remain timeless， 好的设计永远不会过时。From tiger stripes to leopard print, 
animal skin patterns have been worn throughout history. Ancient Egyptian art shows women dressed in leopard gowns. In Africa, Zulu royals have traditionally worn leopard print as a sign of high social status. When leopard print entered Western fashion, it was received in two very different ways. Fashion designer Christian Dior first exhibited leopard print at a fashion show in 1947, marking its entry into the world of high fashion. But in cinema, leopard print often signals that the characters who wear it are low class. Today, leopard print can communicate wealth, bad taste, or independence. So hopefully you guys understand what we're talking about, right? We're talking about fabric. That's what you make your clothes out of, okay? So this is fabric. Blue jeans would be a different fabric. Silk is a very soft fabric. And also patterns, the drawings, designs, shapes, the lines, all of that stuff. All of these things are part of fashion, part of our clothes. Here's a really, really good example. Yeah. Here's a type of fabric pattern that lots of people will recognize. The first one we're going to mm -hmm. talk about is probably someone has it on in your class right probably. now. It's called animal print. I saw an old lady getting on the MRT today. She had tiger stripes. Oh, well, yep. from tiger stripes to leopard print, animal skin patterns have been worn throughout history. Yeah. Ancient Egyptian art shows women dressed in leopard gowns. Really? Mm. In oh. Africa, Zulu royals have traditionally worn leopard print as a sign of high social status. Wow, mm. okay, because a lot of animal skins, right? The designs are very beautiful. Yes. And even if you don't have the money for tiger skin or leopard skin, which of course is probably not a good thing to wear, we can still make things that still have that design. For example, a nice gown. It doesn't have to be made of animal fur. That would be a little uncomfortable and not too cheap, no. but definitely a gown made of uh, something else that looks like an animal skin. That would be very stylish. What is a gown? A gown is a long dress that a lady might wear, especially for a special occasion. The most common one you might know is a wedding gown, right? That long white dress that a woman will wear on her wedding day. Or you could have a ball gown or something like that. It usually is something that touches the floor or goes right down to your shoes. But there are other types of gowns that might be a little bit shorter. In some countries, lawyers might wear a black gown. Ah, yes. Or if you go to a church, the people singing in the church might wear a choir gown. But it's basically a long piece of clothing that covers most of your body. Um, and especially for women to wear to a, a fancy party like, like Claudia in our example mm. sentence. Claudia wore a black gown to the party. <gasps> Very fancy. She looked so chic. Wow. Yeah, it was a really nice gown. I like that. Well, mm. Claudia must be going to a party where she has some high status. Oh, yes, true. Status is a position in society. You can have high status, maybe you're rich or Ooh. very famous, know Ooh. a lot of other rich people. A VIP. A VIP, kind. if you will. You can be of low status, yeah. maybe a more working class, something yeah. like that in society. Sure. And in many cultures, old people have high status. They're really respected, people look up to them people think uh, what they have to say is important. So let's get back to these animal prints. Here's another interesting fact. When leopard print entered Western fashion, it was received in two different ways. Oh. Really interesting. So leopards, of course, this African cat, they're kind of yellowish golden and they have black circles on them, right? It's kind of a donut shaped circle. The black spot, that would be a cheetah. The black circle, like a, a, like a O or like a donut, that would be a leopard. I they're actually didn't know that. Similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They look very they similar, look but similar. actually they're pretty different, yeah, huh? Yeah. So we're talking about leopard print right. here, which is the first one. Fashion designer Christian Dior yeah. first exhibited leopard print at a fashion show in 1947. Oh yes, I remember that. <gasps> 1947. Mm. Marking its entry into the world of high fashion. That's right, these mm. days there's a lot of animal prints on uh, like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, okay. 
Dior. Yep. Bags, mm -hmm. shoes, everything. Yeah. That's right. Fashion designers are always looking for a new idea, something that they haven't done recently. Sometimes these designers will pick an old style and kind of bring it back, bring it back into fashion. But what are we meaning when we talk about a designer? It's basically someone who decides and shapes and has creative ideas about the look of something, all right? So fashion designers will come up with new fabric ideas, new shapes for your clothing, new styles of clothing. For example, Coco Chanel was one of the most famous fashion designers of the last 100 years. Yeah, everyone knows the name Chanel. Absolutely. And she, along with Dior, were really influential mm. in the fashion world. We can see Dior, like, almost single-handedly brought mm -hmm. animal print into fashion. Oh, yeah? okay. But in cinema, mm -hmm. leopard print often signals that the characters who wear it are low class. Hmm. Today, leopard print can communicate wealth, bad taste, or independence. A lot of different meanings there. Yeah, it all depends on how you wear it. But it is definitely a fashion icon. The leopard print, I would probably throw in tiger print or even zebra print. Ah, zebra. If you want a nice black and white look, go with the zebra print. All right, well, that's a good look at animal prints. Let's take a break, and then we'll be back with more about famous fabrics and styles. I like this shirt, it's oh, thank nice. thank you very much. Oh. It's a Dior. Mm -hmm. It's Mike and Kim are talking about gown. G-O-W-N is the woman's clothes. She looks incredible in that black gown. Incredible. It's a good word. 他穿着那件黑色的礼服,看起来美极了。另外,Mike还有举例, Lawyer gown,指的是律师开庭穿的长袍。那其实这个字呢,比较是在英国跟加拿大的用法。那在美国呢,大部分律师只会穿西装,只有judge法官是穿长袍。那但是在美国的话,他们judge穿的那个长袍也不是g
European laws required that criminals wear striped clothes. The clear, broad pattern made these people easier to identify. It's、yeah. true in the old movies, and maybe、yep. even in some like modern comedies or cartoons, right? People who break out of jail, they always have black and white, white stripes, big stripes, but they always go that way, don't yes, they? Yes, always They're never、horizontal. up and down like you see on a on a referee in a basketball game,、oh, yes, right?、Yep. They wear up and down black and white stripes. But we never look at that and go, "Oh, the referee escaped from jail." No, it's always going this way, horizontal. Not vertically. All right, so let's learn more about stripes. It says by the 18th century, that's the 1700s, stripes had become common, although they remained a uniform of rebels and people looking to make a bold statement. So、yeah. they became a little more popular, you know, a little more in fashion. It wasn't just criminals or prisoners who would wear them, but still, when you wore them or you painted someone in them or you know. Had the, a situation where someone's wearing them, they might be seen as a rebel in、yeah. some kind of way. It's a bold pattern for these bold people, who、mm. some might call them rebels.、Okay. A rebel is someone who does not follow the rules. Someone that is always getting yelled at by the teacher, or doesn't listen too much, or does their own thing in society. Maybe things that are different from what other people are doing. They can get called a rebel. Though Stephen acts like a rebel at times, he always gets good grades. So、okay. mm, Stephen's not too much of a rebel. That's right. I'm, I'm going to the library, teacher, and you can't stop me. That sounds、Ooh. very rebellious. He's a rebel. All right. And what about pinstripes? That's another Now, type of stripe, right? Pinstripes,、mm. thin vertical stripes,、yes. sort of like what I have here,、mm. have become a male fashion essential since their introduction, and female too. Okay. Yeah. When we think of the well-dressed British businessman,、yes. they will be wearing a pinstripe suit. Yes. It's usually black or dark blue with. Thin, thin, thin little lines, almost like you used a pen, a pen or a very thin pencil to draw these lighter colored white or gray lines on this dark suit, this dark black or blue suit. That is essential if you want to be a well-dressed British businessman or a politician or Winston Churchill or something like that. When something's essential, this is basically something that you absolutely need. It is required. We often use this, of course, as an adjective, right? It is essential to have an umbrella when you go out in Taiwan because、oh, it、yes. might rain at, at any time. At any time. <laughs> But we can also talk about essentials, especially when we're talking about fashion. For example, jeans are considered to be a fashion essential. Even if you're the type of person who wears a uniform or a suit to work. You still need one good pair of jeans at home to wear on the weekend, or something like that. It's an essential. Jeans are truly something that never goes out of style. I don't think there's anyone who might not have a pair of jeans. No,、somewhere. jeans are everywhere. Definitely. Well,、yeah. in our next part, we'll find out some more interesting facts about some more interesting patterns.、Mm -hmm. So stay right there, and we will be back soon. <laughs> Historically, horizontal stripes were associated with those who were unaccepted by society. 那这句话意思是说，从历史上来看呢，横条纹呢让人联想到那些不容于社会的人。有没有看过以前的监狱犯都是穿横条纹的衣服吗？那这边有提到一个新的文法 ，be associated with. Associate 呢，它是动词。是使联想，或是将什么什么联系在一起。那这边的 be associated with 是被动态，表示呢怎么样呢被联想在一起，或是与什么什么有关联。Horizontal 水平的，它是形容词。那刚刚 Kim 有说 horizontal stripes go side to side， 水平的条纹是从左右延伸出去的。那单独使用的话，这个字做名词叫做水平线，所以还可以是名词，也可以是形容词。那所以说有 horizontal 水平，就有相反的 vertical 垂直。Vertical stripes go up and down。垂直条纹呢，它则是由上往下延伸。Rebel 这个单字 ，R E B E L， 叛逆者、反抗者、造反者。Do you think it's daring to be a rebel and not follow the rules? 
，你觉得不遵守规则成为反抗者呢，是很大胆的吗？句子里面的 daring 它是无惧的。接下来 essential 不可或缺的东西，必需品，它也是一个名词哦，一个例句。Let's go to the supermarket and get some daily essentials. 我们去超市买一些日常的用品吧。接着，文章里面有一句 ：European laws require that criminals wear striped clothes. The clear, broad pattern made these people easier to identify. Require, require 呢，在此指要求、命令，它是动词。那这篇文章的用法呢，是之后接着 that 再加上一个子句，用法为 require that somebody 什么事情呢，要求什么人应该要怎么样怎么样。例句 ：The Taipei Metro Company requires that everyone wears a mask on MRT. 台北捷运公司呢，要求每个人现在在捷运上都要戴口罩。另外。Made these people easier to identify. 在句子的结尾 ，make 这边呢是说使得，使变成，它是一个动词。Make 加受词加受词补语。那我们常常会说 ，What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. 那些打不倒你的，不管是人或是事或是物，终究呢会使你更坚强。所以，我们这边勉励各位同学加油！我们下次见。Hi, I'm Jolt. Hey, everybody, I'm Shane. And we're gonna play a game where we have three words we haven't looked at, and we're gonna try to work them into a conversation with each other as casually as possible. You're gonna go first. I'm gonna go first. Go. I'm ready. So let's talk about.、Uh, Uh, uh, we're going. You're very stylish.、Oh, thank you. Thank yes, you. I, I like your、that. clothes.、Yeah. They obviously are not just something off the shelf. You put a lot of thought into it, so you must be shopping from a designer clothing brand. Well, it's funny you should say that because I was thinking the same thing about、oh, you. Really?、Thank、yeah, I really like your pants and this kind of cool thing you do here, where it's like, is it are they <laughs> pants or are they shorts? <laughs> I'm not really sure. But the thing I do notice is that you know really how to match your fabric. Like, what fabric is this? I, I believe that's you know high grade cotton. And and this one, what fabric <laughs> is that? Lower grade cotton.、Oh, nice fabric. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're very into fabrics, I see. I am. I, I, I am. <laughs> so tell me,、um, when you were younger,、mm -hmm. um, apparently, you know. What is she trying to say? I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, you know, like we change as we grow up. Okay. You look like you have a lot of character, and so、uh, you must have had a, a big background, a different background. You, you you give me the impression that you were like a skater punk or someone that was had like a more. Life of a darker side. And you are a rebel. <laughs> a, a rebel. You think I look like a rebel? Well, thank you very much.、Uh, well, it's interesting. No one's ever really called me a rebel before. Although I do think of myself as a rebel. Yeah, you take it very positively. Well, so. Yeah, right. I think that being a rebel is essential. <laughs> is it now? <laughs> Nowadays, this this world, we have to have our own voice. Isn't that true?、Mm -hmm. We have to express ourselves as much as possible. We do, we do.、Mm -hmm. And、um, one of the things that I like to do when I was younger、oh. <laughs> was、uh, express my Hungarian culture and、oh, my. I was my... guessing you were Hungarian. Really? Because you have a very cool name. <laughs> oh right. Svelte. Jolt. Jolt. Yes. Jolt. And that was the way that I expressed.、Um, well, they're my... telling us to hurry. Yes, <laughs> I'm trying to break it in. That this is.、Um, You know, I didn't have many girlfriends when I was、uh, when I was younger, so I was always in the single status. Status, that's great. <laughs> well, it's probably because just recently you had this like cool style, right?、But、before, I'm guessing you might have worn a gown, and that's what was the problem. Getting girls. How did you know?、Girls? Yeah. How did you know? Oh, I know. I'm just smart that way. Facebook. See you next time.